Today we're talking about Warzone loadouts. And this is one of the things I was kind of holding off on. When you go to a buy station in Warzone, you pull it up and the individual weapons that you can purchase for 2,500 currently because the price was reduced from 5,000. Uh, are in order based off your loadout system. You can't really build 10 loadouts any way you want. You kind of have to build them for the fact that if you want to go to a buy station, you want to grab a sniper, you might want that build particularly ready. At least until they give us another tab where we can make our individual loadouts that we're able to get from the buy stations that are different than the ones that we can actually get from a loadout marker or a stronghold. So first off, we are going to be covering the tacticals, lethals, and perk packages because this is a little bit of a nuanced thing. When we go over, go over here, to the smoke grenade is probably the best item that you can have. Stun grenades, you can stack up on those, especially if you're in a team you kind of pair those out drill chargers are one of the most broken tools in the game because it allows you to kind of spot check where people are it'll go off you'll either hear movement or you're going to get a hit marker so those are very useful simtexes are good a lot of people are going with throwing knives because the finish so if you instead of having to have use that ammo to thirst someone and finish them off and completely kill them you can just use a throwing knife and then it allows you to keep your ammo in there to be able to challenge another player if they're going to push you or whatever the scenario is so that's kind of how you're going to balance those things out perk packages are a little bit different because there is only one with overkill if i go through all of these so if you want an overkill loadout since they're not allowing us to modify these in any way this is the one you essentially end up with i'm not sure what causes bug but for a lot of players when you get your loadout these are not the perks you're going to be given regardless of what you select most of the time you get quick fix even though this says survivor you actually get quick fix in a lot of cases i'm not sure exactly how that part works i know it's broken might be because you own the game or you didn't or you own the elite edition i don't know whatever it is it's broken and hopefully they fix it sooner rather than later but i'm expecting it by season two so with that out of the way we're going to start with number five which is the 762 in the chimera great part about this particular one is they're both the assault rifle category so you know that you can go ahead and stack up on a couple of those and then you're going to be good in terms of ammo you don't have to worry about carrying different ammo types you're going to be all in 762 is a little bit harder to use that's why it's on number five on the list versus like number two even though it packs a punch great for solos and duos even trios if you're a skilled player and then the chimera is great for close it's a little bit more versatile which kind of helps in there if you kind of get caught reloading with the 762 you can go ahead and hit a couple shots even at further range with the chimera and for this we're going to have this particular build here and this one pretty much a lot of people ask me why do i have my optics so close to my face and it's like is that an error no it's not an error this is kind of the the viewpoint i've gotten accustomed to when we had the vlk in all of warzone one and this just allows you to kind of have that feel. You can put the optic wherever you want. It doesn't change the character model that you're shooting at. It's hundred percent preference. So if you want it close, put it close. If you want it further, go ahead and put it further. But this is my preference because it feels exactly like a VLK when I do this, but it's not like the VLK in this game that has glint. I don't want glint, so I'm not going to have glint. The Chimera is hundred percent built more for close range. Uh, this one, you can see it's more built where it has a little bit more snappy aim down sight. And that is a plus here. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have a pretty decent recoil. The problem with this gun is you really don't have a bigger mag, so it doesn't really something you're gonna build for long range. You could go integrated suppressor, but then you lose some bullet velocity, and then you end up with an extra attachment. You could put on an opt. I mean, you got a couple different options though, but this is all built for more aim down sight speed in terms of being able to hit your shots, strafe speed, not the greatest because it is a rifle, but overall pretty solid. Moves us into the number four category, which is the TAC V and the Vaznev. These aren't the best, most meta weapons because there's really only a couple of those in the game. But overall, these still allow you to compete if you get bored with those. I find a lot of people are using just the RPK and the Fennec. If you get bored with that, these are other options, right? The TAC V is still a little bit harder to use. And that's why it's number four on the list. You could alternate number four and number five. They're all solid there. And then as we get closer to the top, you'll see that those are really the standouts that people are leaning towards. Tac V is built for range in the Vaznev. It's one of those ones that has good versatility, but the other guns just do it slightly better when it comes to the Lockman sub and the Fennec, but it's so minuscule difference. It really will come down to preference. Build for the Tac V is pretty much as follows. We go in there and you can see it has a little bit of a slower fire rate and but the recoil is not the craziest. You kind of just get in the rhythm of how far the target's going to be. You shoot it there, there, and then you're pretty much good to go. It does have a little bit bigger mag at 50, so you kind of can work with that. Vaznev. This one's one that's a lot of fun. I kind of use similar builds for my SMGs. You could put an optic on it. I've, I've done optic builds in the past just because I like to give a little bit of variety. You can kind of see how this one works. You got pretty good recoil control, even at further ranges. 
The problem is that the bullet velocity is not great on SMGs as they shouldn't be. So you're able to hit targets right around 30, 40 meters. Uh, but that's kind of really the, the end of that. The 50 meter targets is a little bit harder, but you can still hit them. It's just a little bit more, less consistent. It's going to bring us to the signal, which I think is the best overall sniper. Not because it has the best bullet velocity or less bullet drop, but it's because the fire rate is a sniper. It's a two shot pretty much at every range and you're, and you're in a good spot, right? And we combine that with the cast out 7.4U, which is probably the best sniper support right next to the Chimera. You could probably swap out these two and that's kind of how it would be balanced out. So the signal, pretty straightforward build. We've looked at this one before. You aim down sight, you hit, hit, hit and then you get a good follow-up shot you can even spam it a little quicker i mean it is pretty fast for a sniper and it's kind of broken in that sense then the the, the cast off is again built more as an smg so it follows similar formula i did put an optic on it just because it is more for sniper support if you like the iron sights and, and you feel like it's not an issue you could always drop the optic and then go ahead and put on something else i'd probably put on high velocity but besides that not really much you can really change with that build at least not in my opinion and that brings us to the tac 56 and the lockman sub which are kind of the alternatives that most people are using if you're not using the hardcore meta which is the rpk and the fennec a lot of people are utilizing these two guns and that's kind of what you go with to have a little bit of variety they don't feel as broken as the other two but they're definitely very usable and the tac 56 i like it but for me it just doesn't hit hard enough for me to not use it over the rpk or the 762 which are kind of like my main go-to's right those are the main two but if you like a little bit different this one's a pretty solid one you get that little scar fill a lot of people are also going iron sights so you kind of have that option as well uh, because the iron sights on this gun is pretty gross and you can see it doesn't really have recoil obviously it takes a little bit for the hit registration to register on the dummies but once it's there pretty straightforward you get kind of really easy shots even at range quick little side note on the tac 56 a lot of people said why aren't you running a barrel why aren't you running a barrel on the last video what i will point out is when we go to the tundra we are getting increased damage range and bullet velocity no recoil control so the only reason that we would use this is if we're going to get recoil control on top of those things because we can get those things with high velocity so why would we do anything else let's go high velocity we're gonna get like a 40 percent increase to bullet velocity which is more than that barrel and we'll actually get more bang for our buck for that attachment brings us to lockman sub a little bit different than the build i had previously this one is a little bit faster um and it is built with iron sights so obviously we've gotten accustomed to using mp5 even at range eh, it's a little bit tricky over there but you can still hit the 50 meter target um so not a lot of recoil decent mobility maybe a little bit slow for an smg but the only really thing you could do is drop to a 40 round mag over 50 and then that would speed it up considerably and you'd kind of have a little bit better there but it all depends on how aggressive you play and what modes you're playing 10 bullets is a big difference and it's sometimes a matter of a gunfight where you get the last bullet that's the one that downs them so you kind of play that and you know your own play style obviously that brings us to the top two before i get into that i want to go ahead and talk about these last ones here so depending on how often you hit the buy station for a loadout weapon or you get a loadout from the buy station or you hit a stronghold or you hit the world spawn loadout whatever that is you want to make sure that whatever the second weapon is right here in this particular case it's the chimera but i could easily swap these so the chimera was first and the 762 is second whichever order you put them in make sure that the second one is built over here so that i can get chimera with the kimbo 8 890s and then i would grab that one i would have already bought my 762 from this one over here or i grab this one i get both so you kind of have the flexibility so all these so that you'll have all 10 of the weapons grabbable uh, because currently when you go to the buy station, the only one that's going to show up from this weapon is the 762. But if you wanted the Chimera, you're going to have to have a separate class for it. And that's the problem I mentioned a little earlier, but that's another thing, right? Then we got the RPK and Fennec, which have been tried and true. This is what pretty much everyone uses because it's so broken. We did a, a TTK comparison, just so easy to use. And I use either that... Uh, aim up or i use this particular optic which i have on right now and then we also have the fennec build which is 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 kind of broken it has fast fire rate fast ttk easy recoil easy to control even at further ranges it's going to be a little bit harder but you can see it's not totally slow just 45 round mag it's just kind of how it works out enjoy the builds like and subscribe if you want to find your way back thank you for watching as always have a great day